Hi, my name is Willy and I've been running PopOS since about a year on my production server. Now, the new version of PopOS 2204 has just arrived and I decided to upgrade to this new version. And I've already done the live in-place update and everything is working fine, but actually I, in this video I'm going to nuke and pave everything and do a very clean install, what I think works best for me. Now I use the server mainly for my research in uh, quantitative or computational macroeconomics. And um, so I run simulations, I run estimations, and for this I often like to uh, use a remote desktop. So I can log into a desktop, do my programming, do my development work, run my simulations, my estimations on an actual desktop. And I've tried many different things. I tried VNC and RDP, but for me, what works best for me is no machine. So I will, I will also show you how to set this up. Um, I do run a couple of Docker containers for my web page for, my, for a Nextcloud instance and also for a Git T instance. So I will also talk about how I set this up. Now regarding security and hardening of the server, my basic concept is put everything behind a firewall and restrict everything, all connections to the server as much as possible, except maybe since I'm running a website, the HTTP and HTTPS ports. So you might wonder how I, how I access the server when I'm on, at home or in my office or in a restaurant somewhere and I need to check real quickly and access the server either via SSH or via remote desktop. Well, I'm using Tailscale for this. So I will also show you how I use Tailscale to shut everything off completely from the internet except the HTTP and HTTPS ports, but using the Tailscale network I can still access my server via SSH or via no machine. Now for Backup purposes, I like to use ButterFS as the underlying file system and PopOS um, does not do a good job out of the box when installing with ButterFS. So I will show you how I set up my ButterFS partitions, uh, which um, sub volumes I add because I'm using ButterBack as the main program for creating snapshots on my server, but also to send and receive them to backup disks. So this is going to be quite a long video because I'm really deleting my whole server. I've, I've not done this yet, okay? So I will do this in this video and set up everything from scratch. I will nuke and pave the whole server. So this is probably not something that you want to do, but I just hope that there might be a thing or two that you find interesting. So check out the timestamps in the description. If you have other best practices or approaches that you can share with me, please leave a comment or write me an email. Um, I'm very interested about that. Okay, so let's do it. Now, the server is located in a server room and I should probably do the installation on site. Um, this is what the server looks like, but the server also has IPMI. So I can simply use the remote console control. And now let me give you an overview how my server is actually already set up. I did already the in-place live update. I had Pop OS 21.10 running on my server and just an hour ago I updated just using Pop OS's tool, the Pop Upgrade, to upgrade to the 22.04 and it went flawlessly. Nevertheless, this, in this video I will show you a clean install. Now, the server um, is not booting into the desktop, but into the command line interface. Okay, so I directly work directly here, or of course I can start X. And then I have the PopOS desktop. Okay, so this is one way how I interact with the server. Now, another way I'm using no machine for remote desktop. And as you see, I'm also using the tail scale net to access everything inside the server. Okay, so when I use no machine to access the server, which is quite nice because I also can adjust the display settings to my liking. Okay, so whatever I like here. Now, let me give you a quick overview of the server. So let's do a new fetch. So it is already running 22.04 because again, I did the in-place update just an hour ago, which worked flawlessly. Um, this is the model name of my server. Um, it's running the new GNOME version and it is an AMD Epic, 
with 24 cores and 48 with multi-threading. It has an NVIDIA card and 96 gig of memory. Now, how, do, how did I set up the machine? Let's have a look at the disks that I have. So let me go through these disks one at a time. So on SDC, you can see that here, this is my main system disk. Now, this, these are actually two SSD drives which come with such an adapter and they are in a RAID 1, in the hardware RAID 1, and I make use of this as well. Now let's have a look at the other disks. There is SDA and SDB, they basically are 4 terabyte. And I actually have 4 4 terabyte disks here. And I put 2 into the hardware RAID, and this is then what I call SDA here. This is encrypted with LUX, and then formatted with ButterFS, and this contains all my Docker user data. The other two 4 terabyte hard disks are also put into a hardware RAID 1, and I use these two for backups. Okay, here I'm backing up the system, the home uh, um, folder, uh, but most importantly, my Docker user data. And lastly, I also have one 2 terabyte NVMe drive in the server. Um, and I don't care about the data on this drive because this drive is used for computations. Okay, so I have a partition here which I use for my scientific computations. This is a very, fa a very fast storage driver and I'm simply running my simulations there. And I also create a very small partition, 10 gigabytes, just for the Docker container images. Um, all right. So again, SDC, this is where my root file system and my home will reside. SDA is where my Docker user data is and SDB is where my backups are done. So then I'm uh, using for almost all of the drive ButterFS as the underlying file system. So let's have a look. Let's open the FS tab. This is the systemd bootloader. Uh, PopOS installs the recovery and I have slash mounted to a ButterFS subvolume called add. I have slash home mounted to a subvolume called add home. And this is on the two 128 gigabyte SSDs, which are in a RAID 1. And I'm also creating a folder or mapping to ButterFS pool where I'm mapping the top level root, the subvol ID 5. This is useful because I'm using Butterback to create snapshots of my subvolumes, but also to send and receive them to the backup disk. Now there's encrypted swap uh, here. Um, the two terabyte NVMe, this is where I map just a scratch folder for my scientific computations and the varlib docker folder, which contains the docker images, but those are not important, okay? And then I have those two times four terabyte HDD uh, drives, which are in a hardware weight one. I mount this to Butterfuss Docker, but also to a folder in my user folder. Okay, so the difference here is this is the top level ID and this is a sub volume at Docker. Um, and I'm using this again because I'm using Butterback to create snapshots of all my ButterFS subvolumes and to send receive them to my backup disk. Okay, so this is my backup disk. This is actually two disks in a hardware RAID 1. Um, this is where I send the add subvolume, send receive the add subvolume, send receive the add home subvolume, and send receive, very importantly, my add Docker. Okay. Okay, regarding encryption. Let's have a look into the crypt tab. So the swap file is encrypted on the fly with dev u random. This is what PopOS basically already does. And I have on one of those two times four terabyte disks, I am creating a crypt called Docker and a crypt and on the other two, I have a crypt called backup and I'm encrypting these with Lux. Okay, so this is basically my server.
I use Docker containers for my blog. Um, I have a Nextcloud instance running here and I have a Git T. So this is my, basically my server. Now let's do a clean install. Let me close the no machine because I can't use no machine for this anymore, of course. And let me get back to my remote console control. And let's restart, okay? And then boot into the PopOS installer. Okay, let's hit F12 for one-time boot device. Okay, and let's select my USB thumb drive where I've put the PopOS ESO um, 2204 with the NVIDIA driver because I also have the NVIDIA Quadro in my server. Let's hit try or install PopOS. All right, let's select the language, English. Yeah, it's fine. I have a German keyboard. Now, before I continue, let me again show you my drives. Okay, so this is very important. I don't want to delete my Docker user files or my backup disks. Okay, so I really need to make sure how the hard disks are set up. And I like to do this with Gparted. Okay, so let's hit the super key and Gparted. This drive contains scratch data and Docker container images. This is not an important drive. Okay, SDA. Let's see, this is the one of the encrypted drives, okay? So this is either the one that contains the do my Docker user files or my backups. And SDB, four terabyte, is the other one then, okay? Sometimes it's SDA, sometimes it's SDB. SDD is the PopOS installer USB thumb drive. And SDC is where I want to install the system. Okay, now let's nuke this drive and reinstall PopOS with ButterFS as the underlying file system. Um, you might wonder why I'm so relaxed, <laughs> like nuking my server. So I have everything backed up. Okay, so on this SDA drive, all my files are backed up. So I can restore using ButterFS any snapshot I have in the last couple of hours, in the last couple of days, even in from, one from the last week, from the last month, from the last year. Okay, so this is all stored on my backup drive. Let me show you that. Crypt backup. And let's mount this decrypted drive to just MNT. And let's have a look into MNT. So, SDA is actually my Docker user files. And this is the sub volume for my Docker files. And here are actually butterback butter back snapshots going back a couple of days. That's cool. Now, what about my backup drive? So this was SDB then. So let me unmount and close this again. And now let's open SDB then. So this is probably my backup drive. Okay, let's do the same. Let's back up. Let's mount this again into mount. And let's see. Let's have a look into, into add. Those are backups of my add subvolume where my root file system resided. Okay, and those were sent and received with ButterFS. So those are snapshots, those are subvolumes. And I could use ButterFS send and receive to send them back to the system drive if I wanted to. Okay, so I can even go back up to last year. What about the home? So I have all my home files here. And more importantly, my Docker user files, these are here. Okay, now let me close this again. Oh, let me first unmount everything and then let me close everything again. Okay, so I made sure SDA is where my Docker user files are. SDB is my backup disk. SDC is my target disk for the installation. And the SDD, this is the USB thumb drive. All right. Now, 
let's do simply a clean install. And let's, uh, because I'm curious, I've never installed uh, Pop! OS 22.04 um, with a clean install. And here, let's use the SDC drive and let's do it. Now, because this is a server, I actually don't want to encrypt the system drive. Note that all my important files, they are on drives that are encrypted with LUX, but um, here I don't need encryption. So if I reboot, I don't need to have a remote way um, with Dropper or something like that to um, encrypt the drive uh, remotely. I could do this, but I mean, there's nothing really important on the system disk here, so I don't need encryption, okay? So I actually can hit don't encrypt. Okay, and let's, I'm, I'm simply curious how the Pop! OS installer partitions the drive, um, how fast it is. Of course, this is using ext4 as the underlying um, file system, and I would like to have ButterFS for this. But to save on the all the commands to partition the drive, which uh, I have guides on that, how to do this. Um, I can simply reuse um, the partition layout of the original Pop! OS installer, why not? Now, I could restart the device and have a look at what the um, standard clean install does, but uh, I'm actually more interested in simply quitting this and having a look at again at Gparted. What Pop! OS does. So, all right, it creates about 512 megabytes, probably um, a boot partition for the system deboot loader. This is the recovery partition. Okay, so this is where the system actually resides. And there's a four gigabyte swap partition. Um, let's simply reuse the same partitioning layout, but now change this to ButterFS file system. Okay, so I simply hit again install Pop! OS. Select your language, select your keyboard. And then instead of clean install, let's do custom. Now, very carefully, SDA, no. SDB, don't touch. All right, this is SDC, this is where my system goes. And this is the NVMe, I don't care about this, okay. Now, this is the FAT32, the 522 megabytes, this is where boot goes to. Let's reformat this, and this is for boot FE, okay. This is custom, and to tell the Pop! OS installer to put the recovery system here, you need to tell it to use the custom mount flag recovery here. Okay, it needs to be lowercase, that's important. All right, then this partition, I want to use this, I want to format this as, there it is, ButterFS, perfect. And the last one, I want to use this as swap. Okay, nothing here, nothing here. Very good. Okay, 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 nothing here. All right, now let's erase and install again. Okay, let's get a coffee and get back when it's finished. So there we are. Now don't restart the device. Let's open a terminal and do some changes. Now let's become sudo and let's now mount the top level ButterFS volume here. Okay, so let's mount with options 
I want subval ID equals five. Five is the number for the top level butterfs volume. And I'm also already using some optimized mount options. Um, I do want to compress my data to save on storage and ZSTD has more or less become the standard for this. And also this is an SSD. I want to invoke this card and Butterfest has asynchronous um, discard abilities. It was installed to the third partition and let's mount this into MT. Let's have a look. Note that PopOS does not create Butterfest subvolumes. So if you want to use software like Timeshift, for instance, Timeshift works with Butterfest if you have subvolumes add where you mount your slash and add home where you mount slash home. PopOS does not do this. So we need to do this manually. And this is what I'm going to do now. So very easily, this is a Butterfest subvolume create mount add. So this add looks like a folder and it's sort of a folder, but it's not, it's on the file system level, okay? This is a subvolume. It's a very special structure on the file system. It looks like a folder though. Nevertheless, we need to put all those folders, copy them, no, actually mo move them over into the add. And there are many ways to do this. Um, this is one command. This basically put in uh, L, the invokes the ls command, which gives you a list of this these folders. Then it grabs them, um, ex uh, except the add, and use this as, as the input arguments to the move command. Okay. If we do that, this will take a second. Okay. Now let's double check. Nothing. Everything is in add now but also the home, the user folder. So the uh, PopOS used to create the user folder after first boot, but since a couple of versions, they do create it at this stage already. So we need to move my user data out into a subvolume. Okay, so let's create another subvolume called at home. So Butterfress subvolume create, okay. Again, this is not the folder, this is a subvolume. This is on the file system level. So this is quite different than the folder, even though you can work with it as if it were a folder. But the beauty about those subvolumes is if you do snapshots of those subvolumes, then they share the same files. They uh, only do copy on write. So they, uh, the file system knows which files change and, and this saves much of, the, of your disk space. Okay, so you don't have to worry about um, whether you have enough space for the slash partition or the slash home partition. So this is all on a partition. They share the same file. Um, they share the same hard disk space, but those are subvolumes, Butterfest subvolumes. All right, now let's move the user folder, my user folder into at home. So move, mount, add everything into mount at home. Okay. So now let's double check. There is my user folder. Okay. So we've created two sub volumes. Okay. One is called add and the other one is at home. Add will be mounted to slash and at home will be mounted to slash home. And we need to do this in the FS tab. So let's change the FS tab. Okay. For instance, let's use nano for this. Okay. So let's provide a couple of comments for me to remember what is happening here. So this is my rate one. SSD, which is in a hardware rate one. Okay. 
All right, so this is the first partition. So this is dev sdc1. This is the FE partition, which perfectly fine. Nothing I need to change. Now the second partition is SDC2. This was the recovery partition. Again, perfectly fine. Nothing I need to adapt. And the third one is my actual root partition with ButterFS file system. And here I need to make some changes. So first of all, I want to use those optimized mount options. Okay, so those where use compress equals ZSTD and discard equals a sync. Okay, and lastly, also very importantly, tell it to do subfall equals to mount the add. Okay, so my root, my slash will be mounted into a subvolume called add. Okay, so maybe you can see it here now better. Those are the options. Now next I have to write the exact same thing for home, slash home. Okay, so this is on the same disk. Okay, so I can copy this over here. This will be mounted to home, also with ButterFS. And again, the same defaults. Let's use compress, ZSTD. Let's use discard, async. And very importantly, subvol equals add home. And zero, zero, zero at the end, okay? So some nicer formatting here below each other. Okay. All right, and the last partition is my swap partition. Okay, here, can you, here you can see that this is dev mapper crypt swap. So I ha need to have a look at the crypt hub, how this map point is created, but I don't need to change anything here. Okay, so this is my system disk. I will care, I will set up all the other disks once I've booted into the system. But so far, so good. So let's hit Control O, save, Control X. So quick look into the crypt tab as well. So this is using defu random to encrypt the swap partition at boot time with a random key and then it throws it away. That's fine. Okay, now we are almost finished. We do need to change the kernel options. Okay, so how it is booted. We need to also tell that to tell the system D bootloader to tell uh, to boot into the add sub volume. Okay, so let's go and unmount. Now I want to mount dev SDC three with some options. Particularly, I want to mount the subvolume add. It's already the use CSTD and discard async, and let's mount this to MNT. So, in MNT now you have the files and folders from the add subvolume. And now I want to use a cheroot to enter the system. For this, we have to pass on all our drivers that are in those special folders called dev and uh, proc and sys. So there is uh, a nice command taken from the system 76 help on how to repair the boot manager. So for I in dev, dev, PTS do mount bind dollar i mount dollar i done 
and with Cheroot, let's dive into our system. Now let's check whether we can mount everything. So whether the FS tab is correct, looks good. The FE partition successfully mounted, recovery, home, yeah, exactly, all right. Now we need to adapt some kernel stop configuration options. For this, we simply use nano, which is in etc. Kernel stop configuration. And here we have to go to the system setting. And I like to remove the quiet because I'm using this as a server and I don't use spla the splash screen. But we have to insert root flags equals sub vol equals add. Very importantly, no comma for the last line here in this kernel options section. Okay, there is a comma here. There shouldn't be one here. That's it, let's save this. And we need to do the same for the systemd bootloader entry. Okay, so let's go into boot, let's go there, boot fe Um, FE, no, sorry, loader entries. And there is the pop OS current. So let's make the same changes here as well. Okay, let's remove the quiet. And the splash and add root flags equals sub vol equals add. Okay, optionally you can also change the loader um, and I like to add a timeout so I can quickly access the um, recovery system without hitting escape or something like that at boot time. Now the last command, let's update the init ramfs. And let's clear everything. And for all installed kernels, you can also use U to update, but I like to clear everything. And this will update the kernel options and the kernel stop and uh, my boot partition. Uh, don't worry about this possible missing firmware. Um, I don't even know what it is. If you do, leave a comment, please. Okay, no error, hopefully. Looks good. Let's cross our fingers and reboot. So, reboot now. And it worked. Okay, so let's see. And there's the welcome screen, okay? So, let's go through this. That's fine, yeah, yeah, why not? Okay, I don't have network access yet. This is not surprising because I do need to enter the correct IP. Okay, but before I connect to the internet now, let's see what we did. So first of all, let's see whether everything is mounted. FE recovery home, okay, and the none is probably the swap partition. You can also run a the Bose and have a look at, for instance, there, ButterFS, compress a ZSTD, there is a discard, space catch, okay, so those are the mount options and they should be the same for SDC three is here, and there is the other one, SDC three. Same options here for the subvolume add. Fine, cool. This worked. Let's see whether the swap partition. Okay, yes, it is also there. Let's have a look at the uh, file system.
I have one drive. Actually, it's two drive, but there is a hardware rate one. 10 gigabytes are used. Pretty good. And let's also have a look at the sub volumes. Add and at home, nothing else there. Let's connect to the internet and update our system. Okay, I have to provide manual IP addresses and manual DNS and gateways and stuff like that. Okay, I think we are connected now. Okay, always good to do a couple of updates and a sudo apt upgrade. Give you anything okay. So because I'm using a SSD, let's enable the FSD trimmer. FS trim timer. This will run the trim command on a weekly basis. Okay. All right. Now, this is a server. I don't want to boot into the um, desktop every time, but I want to boot into the um, command line interface and maybe use uh, a different remote desktop technology to open the desktop because using this KVM is a bit hacky. Not all my keyboard commands are working and also the resolution, I don't really like it. So let's disable booting into the graphical user interface here, into the desktop environment, but boot into the command line info interface. And you do this by simply invoking or disabling the Graphical Disk Play Manager. Okay, let's try this out. Uh, let's do a reboot. Okay, this worked. Now Let's install the open SSH server. And let's see whether, what's the status of SSH? Active and running, okay, cool. Now let's see whether we can SSH into this server. Um, so this is the IP address of my server. It's asking for my password. Okay, I can SSH into my server. Which is good, but the server is wide open right now. Okay, so I really need to think about securing it first. And I will use um, the UFW firewall for this and actually use Tailscale to access the server. So this is basically based on WireGuard solutions. So I have a secure connection to this server. And Tailscale does have a, a very good guide how to do this. So SSH into your new Ubuntu server. I did this. And let's see. So let's install this. I can finally use copy and paste. Then let's do a sudo tail scale up. So I need to authenticate. I'm doing this with my GitHub.
And that's it. I have my tail scale IP. This is the tail scale IP which I can reuse. Okay, so and my current running computer is also connected to the tail scale network. Now let's SSH over the tail scale network. So let's copy this over here. Let's exit. Yes, and uh, let's enter my password and I'm back in via the Tailscale network. Okay, now let's allow access over Tailscale for everything. Okay, so let's use the UFW, uh, UFW rule. And this is the port. Let's enable the firewall, sure. And let's deny everything else. Okay, deny all incoming, but allow outgoing. Okay, and let's have a look. All right. So I'm using this server also for my blog. So there's one rule I do need to add for HTTP and HTTPS, but not the SSH port or anything else because I will use Tailscale for this. Okay, so let's exit again and see that by using the Tailscale IP, I can always SSH into my server if I now would use the actual IP, this won't work anymore because it's blocked. Okay, so let's copy my public SSH key. So SSH copy ID, this is my public key to, I need to enter my password of course. Okay, and let's now it uses my SSH key now to log in. So I'm going to deactivate password login with SSH. Um, so I'm changing permit root login to no and password authentication also to no. And lastly, I'm also restricting this to only me. Okay. Let's restart. No. Let's quickly recheck whether I can. Okay. Works. All right. Now let's install um, no machine. Okay. So this is best installed with the graphical user interface. Um, so let me open up my. Well, let me go to my server again, or in other words, let me open up again my KVM. And there's actually something that we will notice. There are quite the errors here. Event locked IO page fault. Okay, so this is something that uh, the AMD CPU that I have that we need to take care of, but we will do this in a couple of minutes. So let's log in. And let's start the desktop environment again. Now let's connect with Firefox and let's download No Machine. Okay, so No Machine is my preferred choice for a way to remote to use remote desktop on my server. It just works the fastest and uh, most reliable. Okay, I need to do this dep. Uh, my second network card is not working. Okay, and down below here, it actually tells you how to install it. You need to run this command here. Okay, now it has downloaded it. Mm, 
as I'm using this headless, I need to create a virtual X frame buffer. So basically after installing no machine, I have to stop the GDM again and then restart the NX server. A new virtual display will be created on demand. This is important. Okay, now I can finally exit here. Okay, now no machine already works out of the box. It will create a hole in your firewall, okay, which is actually not something that I want to have. I want everything to use my tail scale network. But to show you that no machine is actually already working, let's uh, run it. So let's go into settings, the server, let's have a look. So you can basically reach the no machine right here with these commands or it's my tail scale IP, that's my real IP. Let's see, what are the ports? I want this to start automatic. It's time. Yep, I don't want this to be advertised. Okay. Actually, no. Um, I want to run this unattended. Okay, when there's an event. Okay, okay. Share the devices, all right. Uh, that's mostly fine with me. Okay, now I need to restart the server. Okay, and now on my actual laptop, um, I have this, this is the real IP of my no machine server. Okay, port 40, NX. All right, let's see what I can connect. And yeah, that's fine. It's asking for my user data, uh, this one. Okay, so in a way, let me show you. I have, I'm using now no machine or the KVM to access my server. But this is actually not good because I'm have I have a hole in my firewall. Remember that I, um, and this is very interesting. Um, remember that I have. There is no port 40 here, okay? It doesn't tell you that no machine actually opened the port 40. Okay, so this is not good. I want to change this. Actually, there is a configuration option, okay? So you need to go into, um, I guess it's user and X, etc. server, isn't it? I have to use sudo for this, of course. So enable fire. I have to search for a firewall configuration. And let's deactivate this. Okay. And then let's uh, restart the no machine server. So this is user and X bin and X server. Restart. Well, not bad. Sudo. Okay. And let's double check again. Again, this is my laptop. Okay. But I can now connect using the public IP and it shouldn't be able to anymore because I'm blocking the ports. This is good. Now, I do have 
tail scale running. Okay, so let me see if I change this to the tail scale IP, which is given you here, 89.21.106. Let's connect. Yeah, the identification has changed. And I'm connected. I can use my tail scale connection here. Okay. And the cool thing about this is that I'm able to change the display settings. Okay, so I can use whatever I like. Pretty cool. All right, now I have, I'm able to connect to my server and I can do all sorts of things. We do have one more thing that we need to take care of. There were quite the errors. If so, let's have a look at the message. Tag tag level equals emerge alert crit or R. So you have, you see all those IO page faults. This is because I have an um, AMD uh, processor and searching through the internet I actually found a YouTube video that explains what I'm supposed to do. And I will link to this video in the description. Uh, you do need to change a BIOS setting, um, it depends on your processor which one. I've already done this and there is uh, you need to add kernel stop options, okay? So uh, you need to add AMD IOMU on and PT. Okay, so let's reboot. Okay, let's clear the, the message. And let's see whether there are. Let's simply keep this watching whether there will be again those things. All right, I will now want to mount my Docker drive and my backup drive and set up the automatic snapshotting and backup with Butterbag. So first of all, become root. Let's create a couple of directories where we are going to mount the drives. In Butterfess pool, I'm going to mount my system drive, those add and add home volumes. In Butterfess backup, I'm going to mount the backup drive. And in Butterfess underscore Docker, I'm going to mount the Docker drive. And there I'm always going to mount the top level um, I, uh, Butterfess root of that drive. Okay, now if the disks are encrypted, the Docker and the backup disks. Okay, so let's open Lux open dev SDA. This is probably my Docker crypt. I need to enter the passphrase. Okay. And SDB will be my backup crypt. Let's quickly check. Um, um, let's quickly check. Dev mapper crypt docker. Let's mount this to Butterfest. Docker, and let's have a look into Butterfest Docker, yep, and the other one, the crypt backup, let's mount this to Butterfest backup. All 
Okay, this looks good. Now, I want to decrypt those Lex encrypted partitions um, or drives um, on boot. Okay, and for this, I will create key files. So let's create a directory. Let's call this Lex. And let's create the key file with random data. some security settings uh, to change the permissions of the folder and of the file. Now let's have a look, quick stop lux dump dev sda, um, which is actually, so the key slot zero is my passphrase and the one is actually the old key file, which I don't have anymore. Well, I do have them in my backups, of course, but um, let's get rid of this. Okay, so crypt setup lux kill slot dev sda1. Oops, sorry, wrong passphrase. And maybe there's also one. SDB. Okay, now let's add the new key to SDA. So this is an etc. Lux boot underscore OS dot key file. That's the wrong passphrase again. I have a very complicated passphrase, so I need to be careful about entering it or copy and pasting it here. And to SDB as well. Okay, now we, let's restrict the pattern of the key files by um, putting something in the configuration hook of the initramfs. So this is appending this here to the conf hook. And also a umask, and this will harden the security of this key file this is as well. Okay, now we need to add the key file to our crypt tab. Um, for this we need to find the UUID of my of say S of my SDA. There is SDA and I need this UUID of the encrypted drive or partition. So let's I don't know, sudo required. So let's call this, this was SDA, so this is crypt docker, UUID. Let's enter the UUID. And then we are going to decrypt this with our just created crypt file. So this is lux boot os dot key file. Um, the disk is not an SSD, so I don't need to pass the discard option here, but this is lax encrypted. And the same will be for crypt backup. There is going to be a UUID, and I can basically copy this over already. Uh, let's save this, and let's find the UUID of SDB. Boo, where are you? There it is. This was my backup. So again, going to the crypt tab, adding this UID, there you go. Okay, and now I need to tell the kernel to use this information to update the inner MFS. Okay, so we've done all this crypt uh, stuff, but we need to change the FS tab to mount this at boot time as well. 
to, to actually provide the correct mount option. Okay, so in a sense, we've already done this with the system disk. And the system disk, I also want to have the top level butterfress root. Um, so let me copy this line over here. And I want this to mount to butterfess pool. This will be very handy to make butter back work to create snapshots and backups. So let me change the subwall, not to add, but to subwall ID equals five. This is the top level. All right. Okay, so let's mount the HDD, which are in the hardware rate one. Need to find the UUID first. Open another terminal. Now let's find the Docker one. Okay, of the crypt Docker. Not SDA anymore, but the crypt docker. And let's use this UUID. And I'm going to mount this to Butterfess docker. Okay, and this is Butterfess defaults. I'm also using compression here. But this is not an SSD, so I'm not going to need the discard options. And I want to mount the top level, zero, zero, so there is no need to FS check. Butterfest does not use FS check anyways, so no need to do this on reboot. Now, I also want to mount this in my home directory for short access. And there is a subvolume that I created that I want to mount into my home directory and which is at doc called at docker. Okay. So this is the one encrypted drive and the other one. Okay, so this is with my Docker files. User files. And the other one is with backups, backups. And this is the UUID here is crypt backup. This is this one over here. Let's copy this over, paste it. I'm going to mount this into backup. This is Butterfess defaults, compress, sub vault ID equals five. And I don't have created any other meaningful um, implementations. Oh, I see that this at Docker, I of course want to mount this differently. I want to mount this into my home directory and a folder called Docker. All right. And now the last drive I have is the two terabyte NVMe my scratch drive, no rate. So let's find the UUID of that one. Mm. Actually, there are two. Um, the first one is what I want to mount to a folder called scratch. I'm simply using ext4 here. Also defaults. Uh, this is an SSD, so let's put include this card here, and let's system the after. So let's only mount this after root is mounted. Okay, actually, this is something that I pr should probably 
include here as well. And here as well. And here as well. All right, all right, all right. And I also don't care about data integrity much here. And the other one on my NVMe is for the actual Docker containers, which are loaded from the internet. I mean, they do. They are not important because they can very quickly be reloaded. And this, I want to mount this to Docker. Also ext4, defaults, discard and x minus system d dot after zero and zero okay so let's see whether this is already created no so let's create this one var lib docker and let's see whether we can mount everything successfully mounted, mount point does not exist, mount point does not exist, why doesn't it exist, oh, my bad. Okay, everything is successfully mounted. Let's test this, let's reboot again. So let's have a look into the KVM on the actual system, it's still booting. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, so let's uh, think we can use no machine again. The no machine came up, okay. All right, now let's have a quick look what is mounted. So SDC, this is the Butterfest add sub volume, mm, NVMe on varlib docker, very good, SDC3, the sub vol ID5, the top level, then the home, the FE recovery partitions, the scratch, crypt docker, looks good. Here we have the sub volume at Docker. Here we have the sub uh, the root one. Okay, crypt backup. All right, seems like everything worked. Now you're probably wondering why I need those folders, those mount points. This is more or less for Butterback because Butterback needs to have those uh, the directories for as a snapshot location. Now let's uh, do all the other server stuff. And here I've, I've, I've actually documented everything in a GitHub repository, which I'm simply going to clone. Okay, so git clone. And those are basically all my scripts that I use to running Docker containers, to running Butterfest Butterback. Um, of course, I need to store passwords on the server. Okay, and I have, I'm using .env, .environmental files for this. So the first step here is to, this server is actually called Simba, um, to copy this into .mv and then let's have a look. Now I need to provide the information here, okay? So the email I'm using for my um, to run my next cloud container, my Git container, my homepage, etc. So which URLs I want to use, what is the Git, the next cloud domain, etc. And I need to enter these. I'm also using HealthCheck, uh, HealthCheck's IO to monitor whether 
the scripts that I'm using to create snapshots and backups, whether they ran or not. So I will get an email if something went wrong. So I need to update the URLs for this as well. Um, here you can see that I have maintenance scripts that I'm going to run weekly and monthly for my very specific mount points, Butterfest pool, Butterfest Docker, Butterfest backup. Um, I have also a script for Nextcloud maintenance. Um, I'm doing another backup of my Docker files, of my Docker user files to another server using Restic. Um, so I need to provide the information to for this here as well. And occasionally, like once a month, or maybe, yeah, once a month, I also connect an external HG, uh, hard disk to my server and do another backup with Rastic. And I, provide, I need to provide the information for this here as well. Okay. So I won't show you my passwords. So this is where I'm going to exit and hit pause and enter my information here. Okay, I've entered the information. Now I have all those scripts that does the, the do the job for me. Okay, so I have this Butterfest Butterbag script, for instance. Okay, let's have a look at into this. Um, no. So what this basically does, it loads the information from my .env, so the passwords and stuff like that, that I might need or the folders, etc., and then it call uses um, this command to call health checks that the script started, and it basically just runs butter back using the configuration file that I give a na name, um, and if something goes wrong, it will tell health checks that something is wrong. If everything is fine, then health check knows that the script ended and I won't get a notification if everything is fine. So the underlying command is basically just butter bag, use this configuration file. And the configuration file I'm using on this server is my, uh, this one. Okay, so here the logs uh, are stored. Uh, there's a log file that not two instances of butter bag are run at once. What is the snapshot deer called? It's called Butterbag Snapshots. Uh, every snapshot, every Butterfest snapshot is kept for two hours. Um, and I keep six hourly and three daily snapshots. On my target, that is on my backup drive, I keep them at least for six hours, but uh, I keep the last um, 24 hourly snapshots and for 31 days and 52 weeks. This is now actually not something that I need uh, anymore because I'm doing the, the offsite backup with Restic. And here I'm going through the volumes. So my Butterfest Docker volume, there is a sub volume called add Docker, which I take snapshots of, storing them in a folder, Butterback snapshots, and send those snapshots using Butterfest send receive also to my backup disks. Um, the same for the Butterfest pool for add and the at home. Okay, so if you have a look at, for instance, Butterfest Docker, there's always a Butterback snapshot folder which you have to create. Okay, and if I, if you have a look into this folder, here are my snapshots. Now, what I do have to do is create a folder here, butter back snapshots. Okay, let's install butter back. And let's run it first in dry run mode. So um, I need to go into my scripts folder. Okay, so sudo butter back. 
weird. Okay. And this will tell you what Butterfess will or what Butterback will do with Butterfess. It will create a new snapshot of my add docker volume. It will delete a couple of ones because the retention policy is over. It will send receive this to my Butterfest backup and it will clear up the Butterfest backup disk because the retention policy. And the same for add and add home. So this looks good, no errors here. And let's actually run this and maybe for the send and receive provide some progress here. And typically if not many files change, this is just a matter of seconds. Um, of course, because I've installed, I've reinstalled the system, the add and the at home folder need to be sent to the slow hard disk. Um, and this will take a, a bit. All right, that was still quick. So, and if I run this again without the progress, this should be just a couple of seconds. Okay. Now I want to automa automate this, of course, and I'm doing, uh, I'm using, since the server's running all the time, I'm using the Chrome tab for this. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's edit the Chrome tab and I love Nano. There's nothing in the Chrome tab, okay? Let me change that. And in my scripts folder, I also have the Chrome tab I use for my server. So I'm simply going to copy this. Um, and paste this in here. Now, what is this cron tab doing? It is pinging yeah, every minute to health checks whether my server is up or not, or not. And I need to include the actual health checks um, URL here. Okay, so I am, I'm going to health checks and then adding my URL here soon. The next command will run Butterfess butter back every hour. Okay, so this is every hour and it will also store the log file of that into a directory logs. So I still need to create this. Then on Sunday, every, I don't know, every Sunday at three o'clock in the morning and 15 minutes, I'm running a butterfest balance command and saving the log here. Every month I'm running a scrub, okay? I'm running a daily maintenance task on my for my next cloud, which I'm running with Docker. Um, I'll come to this in a second. And I'm running a daily backup, offsite backup using Restic to another server that runs Minio, uh, Minio and uh, for offsite backup purposes. Okay. All right, so let me find my health checks um, URL, enter it here. I'm not gonna tell you the one, so you cannot spam me. Okay, I've saved the new cron top and um, let's, I'm hoping that this will work. All right, I'm already getting emails. Uh, you probably won't see that, that the ping is up again. So my server is up again. Now, the last thing I want to do is to install Docker and Docker Compose and get my containers up and running. So then I'm finally finished. Everything else is setting up Pop OS to my liking for development, installing um, uh, Git Kraken for, for uh, easy use of, of Git, installing my programming languages of choice. This is something that uh, 
I basically follow my guide on things to do after installing PowerPoint. Okay, so one more thing here is to install Docker and get my containers running, get my Nextcloud running, get my Git T instance running, get my homepage up and running. Okay, um, I will simply follow the guide by DigitalOcean, why not? How to install this, with, how to install Docker, so I need to install these packages here. And this is the stable release, that's important, okay. And then sudo apt update. There you go, I can see that something happened. So I need to install docker ce. Uh, let's see, status docker, okay, looks good. And I also want to follow the steps to execute the docker command without sudo, so I need to add myself to the docker group. And I need to log in and log out again. Okay, so let's do this. Log out. Let's reconnect. And let's confirm. Oh, we're not yet a Docker user. Uh, so I think I should can also just do the command right here. And let's have a look into groups. Now we are in the Docker group as well. Okay, so we should be able to run Docker as non-root, pretty good. Okay, and then I also want to install Docker Compose version two. So I simply can follow the instructions here. Whoop. Downloading the binary. Okay, and then applying the permissions. And then need to test Docker Compose version. Well, let's have a look at my Docker Compose file. Okay, so this basically uses the swag reverse proxy, which also then um, hosts my uh, website and a git t instance and the next cloud um, with a database for the next cloud and with Redis as well. Okay, so this will then be Docker Compose. Let's file. So let's first pull all the containers. Let's have a look into var lib docker. Mm, very good. All right, this fills. These are the container images. And now let's run the docker compose up. Detached. OK, 
Okay, let's have a look into my locks. The dashboard is also up and running off swag. Pretty good. What about my next cloud? No errors here. MariaDB. Nothing in here. Okay. And Redis. Okay, I have to s over commit. Error. This is actually something that you have to solve on the host level and it, it does tell you already how to do this. So let's put this here into syscontrol.conf. And then reboot or run the command. Let's simply run this command, sudo OK. And then let's do a Docker Compose. Restart Redis. And let's have again a look into Redis. All right, no warning. Here's the warning and then receive the shut down here and afterwards there's no warning okay oh and lastly the git t no error here as well okay so let's see let's go back to my computer is my block back online you is my git t instance back yeah looks good and my next cloud is also back. All right.